something that people say all the time on the internet is, all right, well, the, the 0.47 chip has been out for ever, right? Why, why would they just, you know, come out with a new chip? But there are new that's just the form factor. Yeah, there's been many lots of iterations of that yeah. point four seven. Yeah. Um, over the last, I think we introduced the first point four seven four three in twenty eighteen. Okay. Um, so there have been so so yeah. We we have been evolving the technology. Around, you know, what defines the array size is just the micromirror pitch. Yeah. That's the distance from the the center of one micromirror to the next. Uh huh. So that has been 5.4 microns uh, since we introduced that TR, we call it the TRP pixel in 2014. But we've evolved a few things. The, the package around the DMD mm -hmm. uh, made it smaller, more affordable. Uh, we've also have gone through several iterations of the controller, which is, I think is an often overlooked part of the projection system, okay. especially by commenters <laughs> yeah. in YouTube videos who just see the, the DMD is, right. you know, as the I end all be all. Understandable, that's the, kind of the star of the DLP show, but the controller is very important. It um, has, we've shrunk the controller down over time, also made it more affordable. Um, so that's what's helping to enable these lower cost 4K projectors. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, when we introduce a new chip, we, we start talking to our customers, which include the projector brands and the projector ODMs years in advance. Mm -hmm. And we start to give them a lot of lead time on the specifications of the DMD, the optical characteristics, uh, thermal performance, so they can start at least thinking about designing systems around our chips. Yeah. Um, so when you see a projector come out, that's usually years of development uh, that's gone on. We work extremely closely with these projector manufacturers to make sure that um, it meets our standards of quality. Um, it also meets our performance specifications and our reliability specifications as well. In other words, making sure the projector lifetime um, and that meets customer expectations. That's another question that I had, you know, rolling into that is um, when you release a DMD, when you're working with a manufacturer, one of the things that also gets thrown around on the internet a lot is, you know, that manufacturer is pushing that DMD too hard, and so you're going to see premature failures. Is that something that you guys try to control from the TI side, or do you say, look, you know, that is really not made for 4,000 lumens. You're welcome to do it, but you're going to be responsible for the warranty and all that stuff. Yeah, we, we are aware of those things happening uh -huh. uh, in the market, and we are yeah in constant communication with our customers about just that, that very topic. Uh, we want to make sure that when customers buy a DLP projector, we're known for reliability. Yeah. Um, we're known for long lifetimes of projectors, um, so yeah, we, it can be challenging sometimes because our customers and, and end users want the brightest possible projectors so that you can put a large screen in a well-lit environment, but there are trade-offs, yeah. trade-offs in thermal, thermal management. You have to cool not only the DLP chip, but the illumination as well. Yeah. So that's when you, when you start to see 3,000, 4,000 lumen projectors, they start to grow very large, not necessarily from the optics, but from the thermal management inside. Yeah. And that's all to keep things cool enough. So as long as our customers are keeping uh, things within the, the temperature specs, we, we're happy. But we do keep a close eye on where our chips are going and how, how bright they're being pushed. Gotcha. Um, two, you know, probably major elephants in the room here. Uh, when are we going to see a 4K DMD that is consumer priced friendly? Yeah, that's a, a question we've gotten a lot over the years. Um, so our, our chips today, mm -hmm. uh, our four K solutions, do put eight point three million. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm not 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 I'm not saying I'm not saying that shifting is not a viable <laughs> alternative for for getting eight million pixels on screen. You know, I'm I'm well within that court. But as far as being able to do four K two hundred forty hertz, four K one hundred twenty hertz, those things are limitations of the shifter still. Um, well. 4K 120 hertz, you'll start to see really? pr pretty soon. Okay. Um, the pixels, we just need the, the pixel shifting mechanism to ke keep up with the speed of the DMD. Wow. Okay. Um, so that, and we think that that should not be an issue uh, in in the coming, I would say, in the next couple of years. You'll wow. You'll see 4K 120 hertz projectors um, using the same um, technique as today. 
Just okay. Pixel shifting happening faster. Gotcha. So still right four now. four shifts, but just a lot more uh, faster four shifts. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not so like the of, ones that are half 2K. Or instead of four shifts per 60 hertz frame, it will be um, four shifts per 120 hertz yeah. frame. So a 480 hertz wow. rate of, of pixel shift. That's yeah. almost unreal to think about, that that <laughs> could even be possible. Yeah, we uh, this the, the behind you have some specs on the new controller. That's what's really enabling this. Yeah. The, the micro mirrors themselves are extremely fast. And for years, we've been limited by the controller mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the, the how fast we can drive the mirrors. So this new controller that we just released in 2024 is the DLPC 8445. Okay. That controller really unlocks the, the full potential of the DMD. Now we can drive the mirrors faster. Now we can use, uh, we can get up to 120 hertz 4K. Mm -hmm. We can increase the color refresh rate to limit any sort of rainbow effect. Yeah, that's that what I was going to ask if that you know, those extra set of shifts gives you another cycle of the color wheel. It does, yeah. And we can now, especially with laser and yeah. solid state illumination, you can yeah. cycle through the colors extremely fast. So faster than I, I, I think the vast majority of people would ever notice uh, any sort of artifacts. And that's my other, you know, elephant in the room question is, why don't we see more three chip DMDs? Cost. Yeah, just, uh, just not, cost? Not just the cost of three DMDs, but the cost of the entire optical system mm -hmm. and the drive system that would be required. So you'll find three chip systems in very high-end, um, large venue and cinema projectors, Yeah, where that also helps increase the brightness yeah. as well. Um, but for consumer projectors, it's just an unreasonable amount of cost and complexity yeah. um, to, to get into the consumer market. Or what, a, what about even like two chips where you have like what Barco is doing for the increased brightness, where you can, mm -hmm. you know, take that first chip to, to shoot away the, you know, your black pixels or whatever, yeah. and then only send the the good stuff to the to the final chip. Yeah, that's a little more realistic. Yeah, and we have customers looking at two chip systems um, to increase contrast. Is that is that a situation where you could theoretically, you know, do like um, TVs do uh, backlight zones, where you could have a lower resolution first chip? Yes. Sending, yeah, exactly. Sending like backlight yeah. zones. So zones that occupy multiple pixels on the display. Yeah. And and you know, obviously, I get the feeling not only talking to you, but talking to you know some of the more open brands like Nexigo, who are you know all about saying, yeah, there's there's DMDs in the pipeline that will do that, just not this year, not next year. Realistically, like, how far out are we looking? Have you? It is the roadmap for TI as far as like, do you have chips planned for 2027, 2028? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah. And much of it I can't comment on publicly. Sure. Um, but yeah, our roadmap extends many years in the future. And what We're, what's what are the limiting things in that roadmap? Like why, why 2028 and not 2025? Um, development of, I would say it's uh, two things on the, on the DMD side. Yeah. Um, we have the the 5.4 micron pixel pitch micro mirrors that yeah. we've had since 2014. It's shrinking the micro mirrors. Uh, we've, you know, done that over decades. Yeah. The first pixel pitch, <laughs> I don't know the exact number, but the, you know, the first projector had much larger micro mirrors. Yeah. And we've shrunk it multiple times over the years. Getting it smaller and sm smaller is just a matter of time and R&D expense, but we are working on it. Yeah and it is coming soon. And I can imagine that those smaller mirrors are one of the things that leads to the ability to do the higher rates, moving around less mass in the mirror. Does that get them, it, you know? It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Uh, but the, the pixel speed is already incredibly fast. So that's not a limit, limiting factor. The main thing it helps with is uh, making lower cost, high resolution chips. Okay. So today, our smallest 4K solution is 0.47 inch. Uh, diagonal on, on the DMD. Yeah. In the future, it will be smaller, um, and that will reduce costs not only of the DLP chip but also the optical system around the DLP chip. Okay. And and without any, you know, decrease in picture quality because generally I feel like right now, in the projector world, uh, smaller DMDs are associated with lower lower end projectors. 
right? You get more screen door effect because the, as the size of the mirror goes down, the space between the mirrors relative to the size of the mirror goes up, you know, that kind of thing. Um, uh, but when you're coming down, are there going to be, you know, premium versions of those that aren't necessarily associated with that? I mean, generally, you're right. Uh, that's why you know cinema projectors use larger DMDs. Yeah. It not only gives you higher quality image, but also higher brightness capability. Yeah. So there are, there are trade-offs. We just think today that there is a lot of room in the 4K projector market that th you can't go and buy a $500 4K projector, uh, DLP at least. Yeah. So you know they're typically $1,500 and and up. Yeah. So we think there's room to diversify the 4K projector market. Uh, introducing smaller, um, lower brightness, but more portable um, projectors that can reach 4K resolution. Yeah, I, you know, and, and that's something that I've really sort of struggled with doing reviews as far as like, you have a portable projector, it's a totally different use case than a theater or even a living room projector in that case. You know, if you have a thousand lumens, is it really worth taking a thousand lumens and making a hundred inch screen or are you making a 40 inch screen and if you're making a 40 inch screen does it need to be 4k <laughs> the, these are all like sure. you know questions that come with you know what resolution best fits what brightness what resolution best fits what size of tv um or or you know projected display yeah like, um, like you have done a lot of <laughs> personal research on this and like I, I can give my personal example is for years i've had a a, a back porch projector mm -hmm. And uh, I make an 80-inch screen, roughly, um, and it, it's gone from 720p about 10 years ago. You know, these like 500 lumen LED 720p yeah. projectors. Now it's gone to a few years ago. I got an uh, an RGB laser 1080p right projector, and just recently I upgraded to 4K. The, uh, I bought an LG Cinebeam the Cinebeam Q, Q? projector. Yeah. Okay. It's about 400 to 500 lumens. Yeah, but great contrast, great color for for the form factor, and it's something I can just like pull out on the fly, and it makes a really nice looking 80 inch image in a you know dim environment. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the the use case is the as more long as you got a good external speaker for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as long as if you're looking for a more like flexible screen. Yeah. You know something that's not always there. Yeah. But you can quickly pull out and. You know, impress some, I think, some guests. <laughs> I do think that that's a, a new, you know, uh, growing market. Um, even just over New Year's, uh, we were watching a football game, and uh, the ball was starting to drop, and the football game was still on, and I said, I, hang on, I can fix this. And I pulled out a portable projector, and I shot another screen directly <laughs> above the football screen yeah. and said, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, again, it's, it wouldn't have been possible to do that two or three years ago to have something you know on a gimbal you know with yeah. auto keystone and just like five minutes and you're, yeah. you're ready to rock yeah. you know, don't get me wrong that the lg cube is not my primary home cinema projector yeah and i've got a you know 0 0.47 4k rgb laser projector yeah making, you know around 2000 lumens filling up a 110 inch screen it looks awesome but it is hefty yeah <laughs> Uh, and I don't want to move it once right. it's aligned. Yeah, that's, that's a home theater projector. So I think there's room, at least for tech geeks like me, to have multiple projectors in the home. <laughs> and I, I would be curious to know, of the people who have one projector, how many have two or three? I bet it's a lot. It's kind of like addicting. Yeah, <laughs> I think at least for uh, for me. Yeah. I want a projector for every part of uh, every every possible display in my home. I pretty much have that. <laughs> every, every room has a projector in it, almost. Yeah. Um, so this has been awesome. Um, any other things that you can think of as far as like things to get excited about? Is I think what? if you're into gaming, mm -hmm. like I'm a I'm a I'm a dad now, so I don't game as much, but I still appreciate very low latency in yeah. my display, and I find I can detect when you know. I, I, I feel like I can detect tens of milliseconds difference in, yeah. in, in latency. So our new controller is a new frame buffer architecture. Okay. More similar to gaming monitor. All right. Um, it's the first time we've strayed away from a traditional double buffer frame. Yeah, single uh, frame buffer architecture yeah. or ping pong buffer it's called. Uh -huh. um, so this new controller can enable, uh, we call it sub millisecond. If you measure the latency at the where the image is coming in at the top, top left corner. Yep. It'll measure less than a millisecond. 
interesting. In, in gaming mode. Wow. Okay. Uh, in middle of screen, it will measure half a frame. So if it's a 60 hertz image, it'll measure 8.3 milliseconds. So can you help me understand then in that, guys, um, why there's a difference? Like my brain can't comprehend if all the mirrors are switching at the same time, right? Is that not really happening? Are they switching in lines, you know, that yeah, we do are imperceptible? The, we do load the DMD in sections. Okay. And it's happening... Yeah, and that's why the top of the screen is going to be faster than the bottom of the screen. Right. Gotcha. So just like if you measure a gaming monitor, that's what you're going to... Exactly, yeah. Typically, when you're measuring like a LCD projector, you can get vastly different numbers by, you know, measuring the top of the screen versus the bottom. But on DOP chips, normally it's... It's all. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you measure it. That's the, the top is the same as the bottom. That's the previous double buffer uh, architecture that you're seeing. And I've always said, you know, that there's a there's a theoretical minimum for each of the refresh rates. So you know, 4.2 milliseconds at 240 hertz is the best you're going to get because that's one frame. Right. Right. Now it'll be 2.1. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. <laughs> for the, if you measure in the middle of the screen. And again, like, when are we looking for those types of of so those, those chips are out now from us. Oh, yeah? And customers are in development. Uh, you see a prototype here. You can This one? Yeah. Um, so you're going to start to see products very soon. Th this year, certainly. Okay. So if you see projectors advertised at you know, the lowest possible latency, um, variable refresh rate is another new feature. Oh, VRR is coming? The first VRR projection technology. Wow. Is here. Um, what is... That's another great... Um, question um, 24 P 24 Hertz tech from what I understand the, the DMD really doesn't have 20 doesn't have 48 it's got 50 and 60 selectable and so your 24 P is never truly 24 P is that our DMDs can support 24 P a native 20 a typically in a pixel shifting application um, they go <coughs> faster so you'll actually, when you turn on 24p mode, I've noticed in the projectors that I have, the frequency of the optical pixel shifter, the sound, mm -hmm. goes up. Okay. So that's telling you that the pixel shifter is actually increasing in rate. All right. So, but they are getting to a multiple of 24. Yeah. So that you are seeing on the screen true 24p. So this is the frames. The frames are being doubled or quadrupled even. Um, not sure exactly, but. Like I know, like a, for 1080p, 24p content, like 1010 pull down, where you're doing like two, actually 240 hertz, kind of thing. But I didn't know how that translates into 4K. It doesn't. It doesn't ever seem to be quite the same. Um, and and there's been a couple of very recent, um, probably just software bug related, kind of things where people have been saying, well, I I don't notice notice rainbow effect normally, but if on 24p content, I feel like they can see more rainbow effect mm. than, than other type of content. Possibly if you have a color wheel in the system, yeah, it could be an effect, but uh, solid state like RGB laser and, and LED, it's just a matter of uh, increasing the rate of the, the pixel shifter, the, the what we call the optical actuator, to 120 hertz. So 24 times 5 is 120 hertz. Yeah. Um, so we're showing each um, it gets complicated with the subframes yeah, and everything, yeah, but yeah. That's, that's why you hear the optical pixel shifter increase to 120 hertz gotcha. um, from, from 60. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 24p, it's a, it's a system issue. Not all projectors. The DLP chip can, can, do, can do it. All of our sort of higher-end home cinema chips can support 24p. It's just a matter of making it work with the, uh, the optical pixel shifter and the rest of the system. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to, to meet with me and yeah, absolutely. Uh, educate me a bit. Hopefully we can uh, stay in touch and, yeah, and um, come back next year and you can let me know when things are coming down the pipeline. And yeah, we'll keep, we'll keep in touch. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Anytime. Bye.